Hello everyone, welcome to another session for a question series for ARD on the BOD exam. And my name is Hansa Nora Sama and I've done my bachelor's in horticulture and I've also completed my uh, master's in nematology in agriculture. For, for today, I've chosen a few questions uh, on the topic horticulture. Please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. And if you've liked the video, please don't forget to share with your friends whoever is giving the exam. Starting off with the first question, which of the following is the high density variety of mango? The options are Ratna, Alfonso, Sindhu and Amrapali. So the correct answer for this is Amrapali. It's a dwarf variety and it's, uh, it's a high density variety as well of mango and it's a cross between the sherry and neelam. So the easy way to remember the crosses between the, the parent and the hybrid is by making the initials of these uh, variety name. So for this, it's going to be DNA. In the same way for, uh, for Ratna as well, it's going to be um, an AR, which will be a cross between Neelam and Alfonso, and we get Ratna, all right? In the same way for Sindhu as well, our Sindhu would be RA, S, a cross between Ratna, Alfonso, and the progeny is Sindhu. Right, so Radna is um, it's tolerant or resistant to spongy tissue, and Alfonso is one of the best variety for export, and it's a mid-season variety. And whereas Sindhu, Sindhu is um, first seedless variety in the world. And Amrapali, Amrapali is a dwarf variety. It is high density. It is suitable for kitchen garden, and it was produced by IRI. So in the same way, I've given some of the important uh, varieties of mango as well as the specific characters, right? So the first one is often, so it's grown in the mid season and it's the best export variety and it has the best quality and a best keeping quality. It has been found good for canning purposes and it is also known as hoppers. Chosa, it is a North Indian variety and it is the sweetest and it's late maturing. Um, Edward is resistant to anthracnose, right? And Bombay Green is an early maturing variety, is also known as Saroli. Uh, Longra, it's famous for its characteristic turpen, turpentine flavor and is, it is a North Indian variety. So Dasheri, it's the best medium ripening variety and it's usually grown in UP. So Neelam, it's good for a long transport and two crops are taken in a year. So in this way, try to remember the important varieties of each of these, uh, of the crops, the fruits, the vegetables. It's very impossible to remember all of the varieties, but try to uh, make a table or make a small note on, uh, where you can easily check it out because there might be questions uh, like, uh, for example, a Totapuri uh, variety of mango is grown in which part of the Indian state? So if you know the answer, try to uh, comment in the comment section and please let me know. But moving on to the next question, the next question uh, says plantation system having one tree at the center. Uh, A, square system, B, quincus system, C, rectangular system, D, hexagonal system. Before going to the answer, let us discuss on the layout this is based on the layout of an orchard it's mostly divided into vertical row planting system and alternate row planting system and under this vertical we have a square system and rectangular system under alternate we have diagonal we have hexagonal we have triangular and contour. We have in total of about six orchard layout systems. In the next slide, I've, I've given the pictures of different systems of orchard layouts. So let's just discuss. The first one here, it's a square system. So a square system is the most easiest to uh, lay out. And what we do here is that we plant the trees in each corner 
over square. The distance is usually the same as you can see this side is 3 meter and the other side is as well 3 meter. It's the easiest form. And the space between these we can uh, sometimes grow fillers of tree or other small short-lived trees as well. Um, in the second picture this is a rectangular system right and in this system this is the same as uh, square system but the only difference is the distance so instead of the square size here it's a rectangular size in the same way the trees are grown in each corner of the rectangle and the distance is not equal the broader distance between the rows it enables a better pathway for the intercultural operations all right and third one this comes onto under an alternate row planting system so this is known as the hexagonal the plants the trees or the plants they are grown in a two in the corner of each of the equilateral triangle and which makes it about six trees and the seventh one is grown in the middle as you can see here right and the fourth one here is known as a diagonal or the quincus system so in the quincus system it is same as square and these are of the same distance. Suppose if it's three meter, then this one also will be three meter, All right? But the only difference here is that the one tree is planted right in the middle of the square. So this is known as a diagonal or the quincus system, All right? And moving on to the th uh, to the fifth system, this is tri triangular system. In triangular system, uh, it's the same as the square system but the only difference here is that the even rows are planted midway through the odd rows so this makes uh, an, a triangular shaped system all right these are mostly known as the isolateral triangle and uh, and the benefits for this is that there are more space for the inter uh, for intercropping and the third the last one is the contour system and contour system which usually use it in the hills where the plants or the trees are grown along the contour line right so we can use in this contour line we, uh, in this contour system we can incorporate a rectangular or square system of layout right these are usually done in and where there's an undulated topography and where there's a high chance of erosion and irrig irrigation facilities are also hard to manage so to increase the water and soil conservation we use go for a counting a contour layout system um, in this hexagonal system gives more of uh, 15 percent uh, density cropping density than the square system and uh, this quincus system the cropping density would be double the square system right going back to the question the answer for this is a, pl a plantation system having one tree at the center would be quincus system. Moving on to the next question, which is the ultra dwarf rootstock of an apple? So usually these rootstocks are mostly used to control the size of the tree and apples are generally propagated commercially propagated through the rootstock by grafting right so these are usually done to control the size of the tree to increase the efficiency and maybe to increase its yield as well as to increase the density right so um, there are various types of rootstocks for apple uh, we have a lot of m series which is known as the mauling series if it's MM, then it will be a Mauling Merton series. These are the most one of the famous series of roots, rootstock series of apples, all right? So the dwarfing rootstocks, they control the wood production in the tree and it directs the energy and nutrients towards the fruit, which will increase the fruit production and the size as well, right? The, the options for these are M9, M27, M107, and M104. So the correct answer for this is M27. M27 is the extreme dwarf variety, okay? And it was first released in 1971 in the East Mauling breeding program in England. 
In this slide, I've shown some of the uh, rootstocks of few trees. So this is on the basis of size of the tree after 10 years, all right. So for the very dwarf, for apple, we have M27, right. And for cherry, we have table. And table is a, a, new, it's a new dwarf variety, which is ideal for pastry tubs and restricted spaces, all right. And uh, for the dwarf variety, for apple, we have M9. This is one of the most common rootstock and it's susceptible to fire blights and fur knots, right? And for pear, we have Queen C and the cherry root uh, dwarf variety is Gisela 5. And Gisela is also a new, uh, product, is a new productive dwarf rootstock, which is ideal for small garden, right? And moving on, we have semi-dwarf apple. We have M26, uh, which is larger, of course. And uh, it's also early bearing, all right? For plum, we have pixie, gauge and damson. These are just um, European cultivars of plum. So they follow the same rootstock. And semi-vigorous fruits. Uh, in fruits, we have apple, we have MM106. So MM will be Malling Merton 106. So uh, for pear, we have Queen's A, plum, we have St. Julian A. And these are the same right uh, cultivars of plum. And for cherry, we have cold. For vigorous, we have apple, Malling Merton 111 and Malling 25. And for pear, we have seedling. And for cherries also we use the seedlings, right? So it's important. So it's important to know the name of the various rootstocks and its features. Uh, it's not necessary that you have to remember all the varieties and all the rootstocks, but just the important points. And um, so there might be questions on uh, uh, citrus, right? So uh, what is the rootstock for high density planting in Kinu, right? So if you know the answer, maybe just guess. Please comment in the comment section. Right for the fourth. The fourth question is Central Institute of Subtropical Horticulture is located in which of these? So for options are Srinagar, uh, B is Bangalore, C, Lucknow, D is Kerala. So the correct answer here is Lucknow. All right. So the Central Institute of Subtropical, this is under ICAR. It was first set up as a central mango research station in 1972. Central Mango research station which acted as an uh, research station for IAHR right and and it was upgraded as a full-fledged institute in 1984 and it was named as a central institute of horticulture for northern plains right and after in 19 95 june 15 it was renamed as the central institute of subtropical horticulture right in the same way i would like you all to um, please jot down all the important institutes and uh, its headquarters the date when it was formed it'll be uh because a lot of questions might come on the, its headquarters and where it was first set up. It's more of the memory based questions. All of these, it's, there's nothing to understand, so you have to mug it up. Okay, so, so the fifth question here is based on the pigment. All right. So pigments are nothing ju but just uh, molecular structures which help in the, um, which are present in the plastids of this plant uh, cell wall. And this imparts a color to the fruits or the vegetables, all right? So the red-orange color in saffron is due to A, xanthophyll, B, chlorophyll, C, polyphenols, and D, crossin. Here, the plant pigment is divided into photosynthetic pigments and protective pigments. Under photosynthetic pigments, we have uh, chlorophylls and we have carotenoids. These two, they are mostly fat-soluble and these anthocyanins, these are water soluble, right? And these chlorophylls can be further divided into chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. So chlorophyll A, they impart a blue-green color, whereas the chlorophyll B, it imparts a dull yellow-green color, right? And uh, further, these carotenoids can, these, they impart a 
yellow, orange to reddish colors and these can be divided into xanthophylls and carotenes. So xanthophylls they impart yellow color and carotenes they impart orange color. And under protective pigments we have anthocyanins. Anthocyanins they impart the red, purple or blue color. So in the same way in this table I've given some of the fruits and vegetables and the causes of the pigments for the color. Right, so the first one is yellow color in papaya is caused by carica xanthin, and redness in apple is due to anthocyanin and the red color in tomato is due to the presence of lycopene and yellow color in turmeric is due to the presence of cucumin, green color in potato is by solanin, orange color in carrot is due to carotene and red color in carrot again it's due to anthocyanin so in the same way that we have for the color there might there are chemical compounds or causes for its pungency as well as the bitterness so some it might be like in chili we have capsaicin right and we have for cabbage the pungency may be due to sinigrin and in garlic we have dye allyl dye sulfide and for maybe roughness, we have isocyanate. Try to remember the causes for all the pungency in these vegetables as well as in the fruits. Uh, okay, so I have one question for you. What is the cause for the color, red color in chili? Please, if you know the answer, if you have any guesses, don't forget to comment in the comment section as well. So for the horticulture section, try to remember all the schemes, the government schemes for horticulture that they've developed for the development of horticulture and uh, especially they are important for in the, during the production technology, it's very important to know the pH, whether it's insensitive, sensitive, tolerant or resistant to soils or maybe the pH, the climate requirements the soil requirements as well, its famous propagation methods, its important diseases, the main features, its important physiological disorders and the insect pests of all these crops as well as the varieties are also quite important to know uh, as well as the origin of the certain crops. So these are the things that you can remember. Maybe to remember more you can make a table. Well that's all for today. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon and if you've liked the video please don't forget to hit the like button and please share the video with your friends whoever is giving the exam.